So let's find out how we can find the efficiency of a Carnot engine. So let's draw the PV diagram of the Carnot cycle. The four basic uh, steps involved in the Carnot cycle are, we will discuss that one by one. First, first process is the gas will expand from this point to this point. Let's name this point A and let's call this point B. Since when you look at the x-axis, as you move towards right, the volume increases. So the volume at A is less than the volume at B. So which means the volume at B is greater and the gas is expanding. And here the temperature remains constant. So this expansion is called the isothermal expansion. So let's let the pressure at the point A be B1, volume at the point B B B1 and temperature at the point B T1. And for the point B, we have pressure for the point B, we have pressure P2, volume B2, but the temperature remains constant since it is an isothermal expansion. So let's call that AB is isothermal, isothermal expansion isothermal expansion of gas. So the temperature remains constant, that is T1 is constant. But you know, the heat is taken from the source. Working substance always take the heat from the source. So Q1 is equal to, and it is used to do the work, WAB. Remember, Q1 is the amount of heat that taken, uh, amount of heat take, taken from the work from the source by the working substance which is equal to q1 equal to wab equal to you know the work done in any isothermal process work isothermal we have isothermal process work done equal to nrt log the final volume by initial volume always remember this formula work done in isothermal process is this so here WAB is equal to N means number of moles are the universal gas constant. Here the temperature is T1, right? T1. T1 log final volume is V2. V2 divided by V1. Clear. That's our WAB. Now in the second process, the gas expands from B to some point C. See, in this process, no heat is supplied to the system or taken from the system, which means this process is an adiabatic process. In adiabatic process, all the variables changes, which means pressure becomes P3, volume changes, it will become V3. Here it is T1, so we have to put temperature to T2. So the process AB, no, BC is called adiabatic expansion adiabatic expansion adiabatic expansion now uh, heat no amount of heat is transferred and you know for an adiabatic expansion the work done is equal to work done in any adiabatic process is equal to nr that is number of moles into universal gas constant by 1 minus gamma into final temperature minus initial temperature you have to remember this formula so gamma is the heat capacity ratio so in the uh, process bc let's uh, let's take the work done as w BC because we don't have to uh, calculate the heat transfer because heat transfer will be zero. So WBC is equal to applying this formula NR by 1 minus gamma. The final temperature is T2, T2 minus T1. Clear. Now our third process is it, the gas will 
Here also you can see that V3 is slightly greater than V2 in adiabatic expansions. That why, that's why we call that as expansion. And in our fourth process, the gas will get compressed from the point C to say some point D. Here the volume definitely decreases because volume at D is less than volume at C. So the process involved is here is compression. Since the temperature remains constant, let's call let's take the pressure as P4, volume as V4, and still here also the temperature remains constant. So the process in happened here is isothermal compression. Let's name C V isothermal compression. Compression. And you you can apply the formula W D is equal to heat is heat transfer is definitely involved. So you can name Q2 equal to WCD is equal to for uh, for the isothermal we have the formula NR temperature here it is T2 log let's look at the final volume final volume is V4 so V4 by initial volume is V3 clear and the last process involved is the compression of gas from D to A which means this type of compression with the temperature also change is called adiabatic compression and for an adiabatic process no heat is transferred so the final work or let's name the point process T to A adiabatic adiabatic compression and we have the work done work done w d a equal to we can use the formula for adiabatic compression n r by 1 minus gamma the final temperature is p1 p1 minus initial temperature t2 so these are the different processes involved in here. Now, in order to find the total work, we have to add all these values. Okay. So let's erase this indicator diagram. So the total work W is equal to we have to add all this work that is WAB plus WBC plus WCD plus WDA which is equal to WAB you can write NR T1 log V2 by V1 plus WBC equal to NR by 1 minus gamma T2 minus T1 plus NR T2 log V4 by V3 plus NR by 1 minus gamma T1 minus T2. Total work W is equal to NR T1 ln log V2 by V1 and if you change the uh, volumes I, I'm just right I just write these two together so if you change the denominator and numerator you have to put a minus sign so minus NR T2 log you can take the V3 to the numerator V3 divided by V4 now this one plus nr by 1 minus gamma t2 minus t1 and if you take the minus from here to the left so you can write this as minus nr by 1 minus gamma you can write here as t2 minus t so that you can cancel this value 
this this term and this term so the final work will be final work w is equal to or the network w is equal to w is equal to n r t1 log v2 by v1 minus n r t2 log v3 by v4 so that's the network and you know the efficiency now let's consider what is the amount of heat we absorbed from the source or from the what is the amount of heat we absorbed we know the heat absorbed heat absorbed is equal to heat absorbed is equal to q1 we already discussed that we q1 is the amount of heat we absorb from the uh, from the uh, source and we you know q1 is equal to wab wab is equal to nr t1 log v2 by v1 and what is the work done and we know this is the network done so the efficiency will always be calculated as the work done divided by the heat we taken from the source q1 so if you substitute the value of w w is equal to n r t1 log v2 by v1 minus n r t2 log v3 by v4 whole divided by we have q1 equal to n r t1 log v2 by v1 so this can be simplified as if, if, if it is a minus b divided by a then you can write it as a by a minus b by a which is equal to 1 minus b by a here the same same principle goes here therefore efficiency will be efficiency equal to 1 minus this will get cancelled 1 minus n r t1 log v3 by v4 whole divided by n r t2 log v2 by v1 you can cancel this n r and this n r so this will be this will be efficiency efficiency is equal to 1 minus t1 log v3 by v4 by t2 log v2 by v1 now let's again look at the indicator diagram i'm just drawing the rough figure of that we have here it is p1 v1 t1 here it is p2 v2 t2 so t1 here it is p3 v3 t2 here it is p4 v4 t2 now let's consider these two processes that is from a b c D that is BC and AD. We have that these two are adiabatic expansion and compression. We have T V raised to gamma minus one equal to a constant. So in this process, that is from B to C, you can write temperature is T1, T1, the volume here is T1 V2 raised to gamma minus one is equal to t2 the volume here is v3 raised to gamma minus 1 let's call that as equation number 1 similarly in this process you can write t1 v1 raised to gamma minus 1 is equal to t2 
T2 V4 raised to gamma minus 1. Okay, let's call that as equation number 2. So if you divide 1 by 2, just highlight this equation because we have to plug in the value we get from here in here. So equation 1 divided by 2, what you get on the LHS, it will be T1 by, sorry, T1 V2 raised to gamma minus 1 by T1 V1 raised to gamma minus 1 is equal to T2 V3 raised to gamma minus 1 equal to T2 V4 raised to gamma minus 1. These two will get cancelled and you can write this as V2 by V1 whole raised to gamma minus 1 is equal to V3 by V4 whole raised to gamma minus 1. Okay. So you can cancel that gamma minus 1. Therefore, V2, you can remove this gamma minus 1. V2 by V1 is equal to V3 divided by V4. So if you apply log on both sides, so log V2 by V1 is equal to log V3 by V4. V3 by V4. So if you consider this equation, these two terms remain same. So you can cancel this one. So the final expression for the efficiency is equal to efficiency eta is equal to 1 minus T2 divided by T1, where T2 is the temperature of the sink and T1 is the temperature of the source. Or T2 is the temperature at the iso isothermal compression or and T1 is that constant temperature at isothermal expansion. Clear. Yeah.